for the Jerusalem effort. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I want to ask two questions today according to the scripture that we're going to read. Let us read from verse 1 to 9. Together. Therefore, there is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who are not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending His only Son, His own Son, in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who are not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For what? For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the things of the Spirit, they bear the things of the Spirit. For to be carnal minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. And if so be that the spirit of Christ will dwell in you, now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Amen? If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Remember that Jesus Christ is the builder of the church. He established the church. The church is his own. Amen? And remember, if you got to be a part of the church, he gives you certain condition that you've got to meet. Amen. As he told Nicodemus in St. John 3. Hallelujah. But today we want to talk about the two laws. Right? We have the law. The Bible talk about two laws there. The law of sin. Amen. And the law of the spirit. And we want to talk to, amen, the Lord, what it means to be carnally minded and spiritually minded. Amen. Hallelujah. First of all, we want to take the law. We go with the law. Amen. So, Brother Dennis, you can go back up to the top. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I'm waiting on some people. Hallelujah to let me know. Praise the Lord. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Amen. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. Hallelujah. So, I said two, but there is three laws there. Amen. So let us see how we could identify those laws. Praise God, Brother Kenneth. All right, don't worry. They will sleep tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay. Let me see all those who experience the law of the spirit of life in them. You experience the law of the spirit of life in you. You sort it. Amen. Okay. So which means if you experience the spirit of law in you, then tell me once you had 
the law of sin was functioning in you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. So if you say that you have the law of the spirit of life in you, that means that you had, before you received that law, the law of sin. Amen? Amen? Now, the writer of this book is Paul the Apostle. He was a Jew. Amen? Saved by the power of Christ. And he had a struggle in his vessel. Amen. Six and seven. He had a struggle where he experienced something happening within him. That the thing that he tried to do and he know what to do, he just cannot do it. Amen. Hallelujah. And I don't know if you experience that operation in you. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you ex now Paul was saying that Paul was a saved man. Paul was a regenerated man. But Paul experienced that spirit, that law of sin. Amen. Taking a hold of him. Hallelujah. And Paul decided. Maybe he seek God in prayer. And he found out there's a law in me. That worrying against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin and death. Amen. So when the law of sin and death start to operate, then you get back yourself into a place carnally minded. Amen. When the law of sin operating, it gets you back to that place where you see all the past of your life. Amen. And you begin, something inside you begin to function. You begin to feel so belittled. You begin to feel you have no strength. You begin to feel like this is the end of the world for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Why you begin to feel that way? Anybody feel that way? Come on, let us talk. We're talking here today. Amen. Hallelujah. It is something that, that is operating, that taking place. And God, this morning, wants us to identify it. You see, if you're not able to identify it like Paul, then it will bring you into captivity. And there is thousands and thousands of people are taken into captivity already. That's why you don't find them in church anymore. That's why you don't find them, amen, reading the Bible and praying as they start as they are to pray. Because there's a law that have a motion that taking place inside somebody and they don't realize it is the law of sin. Amen? So the, that law of sin is the, 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 the motive of the law of sin is that you, I, you give way to it. Because he wants to bring you in captivity. Amen. Now I want to, I want to stir up your mind. You remember some time back in your life when you were just, just moving and doing the things. You're just excited in church. And then there's a time when you just feel that you gaze at other things. And you just, you just don't feel like coming to church again. You don't feel like reading your Bible. But something operating within you that you're giving way to in the past of your life. It's something that happened in the church with a brother, sister, with somebody, amen, that your mind pick up. And so that you give way to it. Hallelujah. How many times that you try to pray and you cannot pray as you want to pray? How many times you try to do good? As a matter of fact, you can love. Amen. When you remember all the things that somebody do to you, then it's hard for you to love. You understand? And this is the law we want to identify today. 
Amen. Because once this law take hold and operating in you, what going to happen? He going to take you into captivity. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He will take you into captivity. Amen. And I will say, I will share some, some things as how this law he will remember it work with sin. Behind sin is Satan. Amen? The architect of sin is Satan. Right? Now Satan don't like you to suffer. But Satan's plan is not to send a man with a gun to kill you. <laughs> Satan's plan is to get you to attend to a little bit. Amen? So that as you attend to that little things, it comes like a thought. And he started to take you on his bag and wagon from one place to the other place. From one problem to the other problem. From one port to the another port. Hallelujah. And all that you could see now, you can't see God because his job is to just not to take you in captivity. He must blind you from the truth of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And we all have this human body. We all encounter with that same thing. A matter of fact, some of you, yesterday, and today, this morning, as a result, you know, we couldn't pray as a result of that. Amen? And I tell folks that even though that you feel like that, one thing, make sure you get out of fellowship. Amen? Because fellowship, the power of God will break it and bring you back to that place. But you have the choice to choose what you want to entertain or not, Pastor Brown. You see, God gave you the power in your will so that you could choose what you want to, to, to feed upon. Amen? So either you feed upon the thing that people say about you, the bad thing, you feel about the things that, amen, that you heard, or the thing that you read, or your little heart that you went through since you was a baby. You understand? And you begin to feel pity for your own self. Amen? I was like that one time. And I used to just bathe in tears. Amen? When I remember all the bad things I did, even to my mother and my father, I say, oh Lord, if they was here, I just repent again. And sometimes I used to sing that song, sometimes I up, sometimes I down. Nobody know the trouble I see. <laughs> Nobody know about Jesus, Sister Mary. And tears just flowing down my, you know, my, my cheek and thing. Until I realized. My sin was forgiven. There's no condemnation in my life. Why should I be entertaining those things in them? I get to understand the secret of Satan is for bringing you into captivity. Amen? Hallelujah. So let me hear. I just say some things to stir up your mind so that you will be able to talk about the law of sin, the motion of the law of sin that you will come to it in your life. Amen? Hallelujah. Now let us not play with prophet. Let us not play with happen to us. He happened to a great man of God and he happened to all the great men of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Okay, so we're dealing with the law of sin. And they love the spirit now. Anybody? Come on, we are the we on the video taking place. Come on. Hallelujah. Somebody going to learn from us. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's one. 
Come on. This is a very interesting topic. Amen. We pray and we say, Satan, I bind you in the name of Jesus, and we always pray in that prayer. But Satan smart on that. Today. <laughs> Satan smart on that. Satan know what you what he give you already. You already have it. You already take it on. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, but that is if you walk in in line with the Spirit. You see, the Spirit of God will convict you. Yes, but the choice is yours still. Yeah. <laughs> the choice is yours. Huh? Yes, it's what you yield to. That's why I say you have the power between you to choose what you want to entertain. You understand? And that's the problem in the church today. That is the reason why we're not growing and as Brother Dennis is about to bring forth the fruit. Because if you're going to bring forth fruit, you've got to go through some suffering. If you look at the nine fruit there, you'll notice that they don't come overnight here. Yes, they're there. That God give you the life. But you must go through the process of suffering to manifest those fruit on them. Amen? And Pastor Brown who asked about uh, what is the meaning of long suffering? Hallelujah. Long suffering is no easy thing. <laughs> you understand? When we talk about love, love is no easy thing. If you end up, somebody said they love you. God had to allow something strange to happen to you to show you how much love you have for that person. You understand know what I'm saying? Amen. Patience is not an easy thing. Tribulation, okay? Patience. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. So we need, but this is important to identify the emotion of the law of sin that Satan used to try to get us in captivity. Hmm? Could somebody say again? Somebody could just say something again? Come on, don't be ashamed. That's why I'm preaching this morning. We want. Because see, let me tell you something. If we gotta prepare for Jesus coming, we got to deal with those things and we got to learn to choose and hold fast to that which is good. Amen? Yeah. And this is what especially something like this, Pastor. We're expecting people to just jump up and to deal with this because in our church we, we use this terminology and all these things so often and when you throw them out and no, but when it comes to know what we're supposed to really like defend or speak about them, it's like mm -hmm. we really wonder do we really know what we're saying? That's yeah. what we're saying. Yeah. Because these things they they there's so much about it. When you think about sin, um, we talk about sin, the original sin and sin is in three phase, the original sin. And we talk about the presence of sin and the powers of sin. Mm -hmm. We are saved when a person gets saved, we are saved from the original sin. That will never, yeah. the Bible says God washed that away, yeah. that, you know, uh, that will never be brought up again, right. unless you choose to go back in to your stomach. Mm -hmm. But that will never. Then we, are, then we have the power of sin, and this is where the problem is, mm -hmm. because we still have that sinful nature within us. While the Holy Spirit is in us, that sinful yeah. nature is not taken away, it's still there. And that's where the war, Paul talk about the war with the, the, that it goes on within us, that right. with the code, when he say, when I rise to do good, evil presents right. itself. Where did it come from? From within me. It comes right. from, from God. So that war is going on, and that's the power of sin. Mm -hmm. We are saved. From the power of sin, but we have to implement it. Yes, the tool is to. there, yeah. but we have to use it. Go back to what you say. Right. And then we have the presence of sin that means that as long as we're in this life, we have to live with that one. Yeah, John yeah. say, John say, if any man say, I'm not seen. Then the truth is not the in him. The truth is not in him. That means. Because, the nature is because you're in his nature. Yeah. Now, when, let me just say something about his nature. Now, when you receive Christ in your life, you receive that spirit of life in you. Now, you have two nature. 
the nature of God and the nature of Christ and the nature of man. That's the nature that you're born with. And that's amazing because imagine that Christ come and dwell in you and you have this nature. But these two nature have two different minds. <laughs> two this these two nature have two different appetites. Two desires. Amen. And this is what we're speaking about. The nature of God and the nature of man. So you will always have the wrestling taking place. But the choice has to be yours. In knowing which one to give way to. Yeah. Yeah, to whom you yield your member to, you become the sovereign to obey. Amen. Hallelujah. So it is important that we understand who we are. And we understand that this nature of the flesh, the only time when you're going to feel true perfection is when the Lord clothed you with the celestial clothing. As long as you're in this nature, you will be tempted. You will, amen, all yield to something without the lack of knowledge. Even sometimes you have the knowledge, but sometimes you, you, you end up in that position. Hallelujah. Yeah. Saying the same, yeah. That's right. No matter what you are, it's gonna be there. So you hear your neighbor God and what I say, I press toward that an old man are ready to die. Yeah. I'm pressing toward the man. But you know what Paul used to cross that long time. No, there's no such thing as ever crossing to that land when it's right. Hallelujah. You see, and God would not take it away from you. You see, we have a time to with us prayer. We're asking God, Lord, take this thing away from me. Lord, take it away. No. God gave the power to diffuse it. Amen? You're listening negative and you say, Lord, help me to listen good things. God give you the power to listen the right thing. Amen? Hallelujah, you carry news and you say, Oh God, you get conviction as the Henry said, the Spirit of God convict me. But yet still, your prayer is not sufficient. Because remember, it is you. It's up to you to choose what you want. Amen. So even though we have the human nature and the nature of God, yet still we have choices. To make. Amen. All these choices are important. Amen. Good choices and bad choices. Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 David said in a psalm, he said, I was glad I was afflicted because I know I went away from your world. Amen. I'm glad I was afflicted because I move away from your word. Most of the time, what does happen is that we have a nice service. We had a nice time. A nice revival take place. And Satan don't like that. So what did he do? He sends some little bait for you. And after that, you start to feel dumb. You start to feel cold. You start to feel something happen to you. It happened to me too. Amen. Did I tell you sometime I just can't pray as I ought to pray. I just can't read as I ought to read. But because I know how to control my mind, I began to give way to the things that God would have me so that I can get a renewal of my mind. Amen. Hallelujah. Your mind is the battleground. Amen? Your mind is the battleground. Then it's real. Let this mind which was in Christ be in you. <laughs> but for Christ's mind to continue to be in you, what's going to happen? 
you gonna reach a process in your life where you learn to give up the carnality of the man. You learn to deal with it. Amen. Hallelujah. And unless you don't learn that, you will not have full victory to walk in the law of the spirit of life. Amen? Because it's shifting from one and stepping into the other. Amen? I move from that and, I, and immediately that you, you learn the secret of control your mind, you will see how your victory comes. It don't come because of the amount of prayer that you pray. The amount of fast. It comes because of I understand how to control my mind. How I dis how to, to, to really let go of certain things in my life. It's one of the hardest things with the carnal mind. When you're trying to let go of something to still be a carnal minded person. You understand? The only time it happens when you end up really desire to step into the mind of the spirit, the love of the spirit. Amen. Remember the Bible said the carnal minded man is enmity with God. In other words, once you're going to continue to entertain the carnal mind things, right? You can entertain God. It's enmity against God. Hallelujah. And where you find it? Right within you. <laughs> Yeah. And that's what the Bible says. The soul that sin it. I mean, that's the word that sin it. E D H means a continuation of yeah. Shall surely die. Right. In other words, no, you have no relationship with Christ. And often time you live in church, you talk to people who are willing to open up and they say, you know, I just can't stop doing this. I don't have no power over it. If there's something any one of us are doing that we have no power, what we are mm. really saying is that that thing is more powerful than the God you serve. That's right. That you have no power over it. That's Anything right. that you cannot give up or I cannot give up. I mean, we, we, none of us is free from it. We all of our struggle. And yeah, at the right, right time, and at the right place, mm. we will fall. You can't say all what you say will never commit fornication. At the right time, the right place, and with the right person, you will fall. So That's therefore right. we try to keep ourselves away from certain things. You will not steal, you will not lie. I don't I don't test I don't think God. I don't test if I know the God will do it. <laughs> I'm like the guy who stays so far away that I don't have to worry about doing it. And every now and then I get caught up in stuff. <laughs> Just the same way like everybody else because none of us is free from it and right. stuff like that. But but because it's a it's a difficult thing. Remember, we're born with a sinful nature. Nobody taught a child to curse or to do bad things or to steal or to lie. But if your child is like my own, then they do the same thing. No matter how much they are in church, you don't teach them that. Yeah. But now we are training ourselves to live a different kind of a lifestyle in a sin, especially like New York. It's like an impossible task. Yeah. Because here is the more lie you can tell and the more garbage you can do with it. And you see the political system that is coming up now. You know, the more garbage you can do, the more you are accepted. In this world is not for Christian. It's not for Christian. This world is not for us. It is not for us. We are, we are going to struggle to, 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 to make it in this life. Amen. Right. We have to be determined to make it in And that's why Jesus said he that endure it. And you are He that overcome it to the end. Yeah, you are it. You understand? Because your face you face all kind of a situation. And that's why the politician there, even though they, they kind of have got mind, when they get in the power, they cannot, they have no power of their own. You understand? To abstain from certain things. Because they had to, they had to please everybody. They need the force. So they're, they're Christian in church today. They come to a church, they sing and show, and then they go on and strip it, march yeah. and march it, that group and support that group. Right. That right. They're yeah, politicians. Right. So we need to understand. Right? We need to understand. Paul said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service and be not conformed to this world, right? A pattern yourself to the image of this world. Do you understand? So once you begin to do that, then you bring yourself to a place for Satan to have its course in your life. And then you end up severe yourself from the love of the Spirit of Christ. Amen? From the Spirit of Christ. Hallelujah. And sometimes people 
They just show stubbornness like so. As you say, they know that this is wrong. And let me tell you something. If we're going to confess that we can, it's hard for me to do it. You understand? I, I can't do it. That means you confess defeat. That means you confess that I don't want change. You understand? Hallelujah. I meet ministers who they preach and some things they, they will say.